It is November 19th. I am here with uh, the effervescent Amber. And the effervescent. I don't know. Ooh. Those are the words that came in my head. Yes. And we are going to talk about a show we just finished uh, that apparently no one but us likes called Marvel's Inhumans. Which we like because, you know, we like things. So if you don't know what that show is... It is the newest Marvel television show. It was an eight-episode series, which means very short. Uh, they released the first two episodes as an IMAX movie, and apparently nothing went well for them, uh, which is unfortunate because I always like an expanding of the Marvel Universe. Agreed. So do I. Uh, but for whatever reason, this didn't take off, and I don't know if it's going to continue, but what will continue in this video is spoilers and lots of them. Hashtag spoilers. Yeah, so be prepared. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is a couple of characters. I want to mention one thing that I don't like before we get into anything mm. else, and that is Medusa's hair. Uh. <laughs> um, so in the comics, Medusa's hair is like this living creature, and it's always like around her all the time. She uses it for literally everything. Like she doesn't need arms or legs. She has hair. And then in the show, it was a terrible, terrible wig. Like, my hair is red now. Like, it's in an incredible messy bun, of course, because it's Sunday fun day. But it's red, and it's, like, terrible red. But her hair was fake wig red, which is not acceptable. And it's not even the color. It was just it, flat. No, no, no. And... It looked like aerial awful red. Yeah. And you can... Uh, like, I can forgive terrible color. Yeah. She's a comic book character. Her hair can be a terrible color. But it was just flat and boring and didn't do anything. It really bothered me. Okay. Uh, now we're going to move on to happier things. This would be the character of Maximus. My future husband. He's a jerk. Which means that Amber really likes yes. him. <laughs> it's the same um, actor who plays Ramsey Bolton on... Who is also a jerk. A and terrible Amber human really being. I like him within reason on Game of Thrones. But yes, no, he's a terrible human being. Flaying people is not a thing one should do in real life. Or in general, I suppose. But Maximus as a character, his name is Maximus on the show. And he's the brother of the king. Uh, who was, uh, it alludes to, in love with Medusa, whose hair we just talked about. And he's the one that shaves off all of the fake hair, real hair. We're not quite sure at that moment. But she definitely has, like, shaved hair throughout the rest of the season. Hashtag spoilers. But I, I mean, I personally think that his character maybe has the most growth and development of most of them, and you get to learn that. more about him and his motivations as the eight-episode series goes along. Mm -hmm. um, I think the Maximus is, like, an interesting character. He is an inhuman who, when he went through Terra Genesis, instead of getting a power, became human, and he's kind of bitter about it. And they've made humans sort of lower class in this society. Like, they're not a good society. Like, you're supposed to cheer for Black Bolt and Medusa, and they're kind of ruling class jerks. Uh, which I think is maybe part of what yeah. made this kind of a difficult series to swallow. And for me, like, it reminds me, there aren't very many caste systems left, uh, basically, on our planet currently. But it reminds me a little bit of stories I've heard of some cultures in Africa and Southeast Asia where they're still like not it's not a caste system but basically it is a caste system where you have the people who had the money you have the people who work in the fields and even though like that separation existed maybe 50 years ago like uh, their parents whatever they did still dictates what their children do and what their grandchildren do and like everything else like whilst it's been the caste system itself has been abolished there's still a lot of studies and a lot of like publications mm -hmm. about how that caste system still exists and how caste systems in general don't actually work so yeah and uh, clearly they don't work in this show uh, they don't work well for any of the characters and I really do think that Partially, that's what hurt the show yeah. overall. Another thing a lot of people complain about is the aesthetics. Uh, so this show was shot in IMAX, and it's big and beautiful, uh, and large parts of it are in Hawaii, which we will talk yes. about in a minute, which is a vibrant, <laughs> beautiful, colorful place. Oh my God, yes. The comics with the Inhumans, they are crazy and colorful and ridiculous, and then they dressed them all in black and made all of Adeline gray 
for this show, which I get sort of what they were going for. They wanted it to be this kind of like stark place and like a big difference between that and Hawaii, but it just comes off kind of blah. And I mean, Adeline, yes, wall on the dark side of the moon, obviously you want it to blend in, but they have a dome cover. Why not paint a wall? Like, yeah, it yeah, could definitely really. be colorful. So I get that. But moving on to Hawaii, which is the antithesis of Adeline, like literally the antithesis, because where Adeline is dry and gray and blah, you have Hawaii, which is vibrant and beaches for days. And they make a point of emphasizing the beaches, especially in two or three different characters, mm -hmm. like story tracks as soon as they land in Hawaii. You see the beach, you see the Pacific Ocean, you see how they react to the water and how much there is yeah, more guys, to them the moon doesn't have oceans in case you didn't know it's a Hashtag big deal know your facts <laughs> <laughs> um i also really like not just the location of hawaii but the fact that the culture of hawaii so there's like a mixture of the two hawaiian things so there's that sort of like hawaii loyalty to hawaii where people don't like outsiders but then there's also like this once your family that's who you are. This thing, which is like, so I've been to Hawaii once in my life and it was great. I was 13. It was a fun mm -hmm. experience. And you see this a lot. And me doing this means hang loose. Like mm -hmm. literally it doesn't matter if you're from Hawaii or if you're just visiting, you just <clears throat> like I, when I went to Waikiki beach and I was 13, I met some dudes who taught me how to surf. And it was like, I was the little wahini and they taught me like this thing. It was just like hang loose. And like, that is what is also evident in the show. Yeah. Uh, so one of the characters meets a bunch of locals who agree to like help him fight even though they have no stake in this battle just because they're now friends and that makes them family. And I like the way that the culture plays in and it is a good, like the setting is a good antithesis to Adeline. They're sort of everyone is together and we all work together and we're all going to be the same is an antithesis to the Inhumans view that like we have a strict caste system, um, which I think is interesting. Apparently not enough to draw people in, but that's okay. What did I write next? Uh, oh, associated, <laughs> but not. <laughs> okay. So. So I think another thing that this suffers from is clearly they weren't sure if it was going to do well. So yes, it is part of the larger Marvel universe, but they literally make one or no. two illusions, yeah. maybe. They, they, nothing. They talk ma about how there are inhumans, quote unquote. And mm -hmm. the beginning of the series, which so therefore it's not so much of a spoiler if you watch literally the first 10 minutes, is an inhuman. Some, a human who has gone through the genesis process, aka been exposed to a crystal or whatever, and then found a power they have that as the very first part of the episode. So, like, they make that illusion, but after that, then there's very little to tie anything to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or the greater Marvel Universe. Which I find fascinating, especially because, like, they make this big, like, thing about, like, oh my god, aliens, when, yeah. like, there are aliens in at least one of them. No, two. Two of the Marvel <laughs> films! And Thor is basically an alien. Yeah. And they talk about it all the time in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. about how, oh, New York got destroyed because yeah. of everything that happened. Like, all of these things have happened. And it's just like, meh. Apparently, if you live on the moon, you just don't pay any attention to Basically. the large Marvel Universe. However, there are a lot of these general allusions to something bigger that they might have to face. Like, I don't know, Thanos? I'm just saying. I don't know if that's true, but it seems like they could be leading that way, and then it just never, ever makes it there. True. But let's move on from the illusions to nothing to the fate worse than everything. Okay. Uh, Major spoilers. Uh, spoilers for the very end of the show, so if you are watching, stop listening to us right now. Okay. So we talked about the fact that Maximus basically tries to overthrow the king and take over. He's a jerk. He basically wants to do it because he wants to become inhuman by going through Terra Genesis again. Um, however, he faces off against his brother, reveals some secrets, uh, and is like, now you can kill me. And we think that Black Bolt is going to kill him. But Instead, the moon is falling apart. All of the inhumans have to leave and return to Earth which opens it for a second season that maybe won't ever happen. Uh, and 
Black Bolt. Black Bolt uh, locks up Maximus in the one place yes. that will survive the rest of Atlan being destroyed. And Black and Bolt. There. Yeah, and Black Bolt can't talk without destroying literally everything. Like, that is what happens when he goes through his pterogenesis is if he speaks, he disintegrates, destroys, whatever. Blows so, things apart. Yeah, so he says goodbye, brother, uh, at the very end, basically, almost, of this episode. And after locking Maximus into this vault where you have just found out that, yes, this is the first place we built. So it will last forever and we have food to last for a hundred years or something, Mm -hmm. he says. And then he says, goodbye, brother. And it destroys the entire outside of this cavern or whatever, vault, whatever. Basically, like, yes, preserving even more that he's going to live forever but also making it so he's in solitary confinement, basically, until the end of his days. Yeah. He leaves him alone for, you know, this show's never going to get another season. So literally Literally forever. forever. Uh, Also on the dark side of the moon. Yeah. And Maximus (laughs) was a jerk, but I think that that was terrible. Like, the worst thing that happened, by far, the most heinous atrocity in the entire film. Yeah. Well, well series. sorry. Series. <laughs> the most was, heinous atrocity in the entire series was him walking yeah. up. Maximus. And it's so cold hearted. And you see like Medusa the entire, actually since she reunites with Black Bolt and Medusa of everyone probably has the best reason to want to murder Maximus. Mm-hmm. But she keeps arguing with her husband, Black Bolt, to not murder yeah. him and to give him a fair trial and to give him this and to give him that to show that they are better than what has been before. Mm-hmm. And I'm interested to see if this ever has a second season. The ramifications of now, there is not a trial or anything. She, He has basically sentenced him to a long death. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um. So those are the main points that we had. Uh, most of the critics just see nothing good about... No, that's not true. <laughs> Everybody likes Lockjaw, the this giant is true. teleporting this dog. This is true. <laughs> uh, us included. But He's most people don't like other things. Uh, yeah. It's a bummer. I can see, though, where the holes are. And it just didn't really come together in the same way. And like we talked about, Maximus mm-hmm. is basically the only one who seems to have any growth. Yeah. Uh, and I think that that's a big problem. Also, Crystal's hair is a big problem. Oh, my God. Like, I like it, but I hate it so much. Uh, like, Mallory... It looks like it is in the comments. Mallory but heard me absurd. say how much I hated it so often. Uh, <laughs> so, overall, uh, out of five stars, I'm willing to give this show more than I gave Justice League. I'm going to give it two. Ooh. I give Justice League one and a half. I'm going to give it, like, two and a half. Like, I can't do a half effectively. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, I enjoy that there are different characters. This is a different setting. I, of course, enjoy astronomy. It's always been a thing of mine. And so, like, something concept on the dark side of the moon always interests me. And I enjoy the idea of where this could go. But also, I can see why people don't see it going further than where it is. As far as recommending if you watch it, I'd say wait and find out if there's a second season. And if there is, then watch this. And if there isn't, then maybe it's just just pass it by. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's it. I have to edit this now because Amber cursed. Oops. <laughs> I wouldn't have had to edit it if she didn't do I'm that. so sorry. It's I can fine. only edit myself so much. All right, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>